Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our general meeting for November. Um, District Chief Edward Rompoint, and I will be chairing the meeting as the Grand Chief uh, is unavailable this evening to join us. He's a part of, actually, he's part of an Ontario team responsible for negotiating the timely settlement of a child welfare discrimination case that affects all First Nations. So he sends his regrets and regard and has asked that I chair this. <clears throat> Call this meeting to order and we'll go through council attendance. Um, we'll have a moment of silence right now. Okay, we have the agenda, <clears throat> the council agenda. So we have rules of order. We've got follow up from the general meeting action items. We have uh, some update with mental health for the holidays. Uh, we have the Department of Community and Social Services that'll be presenting on the food pantry. We have the holiday dinner update, the community watch. We will be doing the questions received. We will be responding from that, followed by any other questions and resolution for general meeting minutes, and then the announcements of the next general meeting, followed by adjournment. So having said that, can I get a, a mover? Move by Julie, second by Tim, all in favor? Okay, it's carried. So rules of order. <clears throat> general meetings are to occur the last Thursday of each month and will occur in each district on a rotating basis in Gawanoga, Ganadgu, and Jishnaihne. The exception to this is with the General Meeting Cancellation Protocol, MCR 2015-2016, number 260. In the unfortunate circumstance where a community member passes in one of the three districts, the meeting will occur as regularly scheduled in the other two districts where the member did not reside. A moment of silence will also be taken in their memory. The general meetings are an opportunity for community members to hear information from council and assist council with issues that affect the community. The following general meeting rules were originally developed at a community general meeting in July of 2006. The principles for general meeting rules is based on respect for each other and all attendees are expected to behave respectfully and professionally at all times. General meeting rules. Meetings will start at 6 p.m. and will proceed to a maximum of 8 p.m., at which point the community will be asked if they choose to continue past 8 p.m. Personal issues will not be dealt with in a public forum. General meetings. Personal items can be dealt with on an individual basis with council members or by appointment through the Mohawk Government Office. If you have questions or comments during the meeting, Raise your hand and wait to be acknowledged by the chairperson. <clears throat> the chairperson will keep note of the order that community members indicate to be acknowledged. Please keep the questions and comments relevant to the point of order within the agenda and be considerate of the time used. A list will be made of issues you wish to address to council and if the answer cannot be provided at the current meeting, the issue will be taken back to council table for further discussion and follow up. Hmm. That concludes the rules of order. So follow up. So we have a follow up from October 28, 2021 general meeting action items. And those items we have question one what committees have a list of terms of reference? With the Grand Chief not available at this moment, he will follow up at the next general meeting. Number two, regarding the police commissions, I'll have Chief Vanessa Adams uh, provide an update on that. Vanessa? No update on that? Okay. 
So we'll continue to follow up on that and we'll defer that to the next general meeting. As well as questions three and four, um, Grand Chief has those uh, responses. So we'll have to defer those two questions as well to the next general meeting. Okay, following that, we will move on to <clears throat> an update for mental health for the holidays, which will be presented by Chief Vanessa Adams. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, I had difficulties with my unmuting. Uh, the Department of Health, um, holiday mental health resources. Next slide, please. So the Holistic Health and Wellness Program contact information are the Gunungwatsalio Health Facility at 613-575-2341. Traditional Medicine is extension 3100. Prevention, Addiction, and Mental Wellness Services are at extension 3115. Akwazasna Medical Clinic, Ganadago is extension 3215. And the Gawahnoge Medical Clinic, is 613-932-5808. Next slide, please. Um, the Holistic Health and Wellness Program team, um, your contact people are Program Manager Bonnie Bradley, Traditional Medicine is Elizabeth Lazor, Cultural Counselor, Alicia Cook, Traditional Medicine Specialist, Levi Hearn, Traditional Medicine Worker, Prevention program, that's Kyle Thompson, coordinator. Um, in addictions, you have Joey David, case manager, and Sierra Johnson Sunday is a case manager. For mel mental wellness, um, you can contact Melissa Jacob Swamp, clinical social worker, Winyata Nolo Oaks, psychotherapist, and Valerie Rowe is a psychotherapist. Next slide, please. That's all. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you, Chief Vanessa. Next up, we're gonna have Chief Cindy Francis Mitchell presenting on the Department of Community and Social Services Food Pantry. Oh, I guess I was muted too. Uh, Sago, so um, presenting on the Department of Community and Social Services, DCSS. Next slide, please. Aquasus New Child and Family Services is in the process of updating their policies. Snow, Snow Suit Initiative with Community Support Program, CSP. Majority of clients have picked up their snowsuits. Upcoming programming, community support, parade of lights, babysitting course, skiing, basket making, baby magazines, mittens, youth first aid and CPR and fitness camps. Family and traditional support, sons of tradition, daughters of tradition, mending broken hearts, fathers of tradition, and positive Indian parenting. Next slide, please. Akwazasne Family Wellness Program, starting the process to update policies as well. In the process of renovations at shelter, adding bathrooms, an accessible unit on main floor of shelter. Akwazasna Healing Center geared towards abstinence-based program for individuals faced with mental health and addiction issues. Looking, currently looking at other buildings in Cornwall, issues at current location interfere with program opening for services. Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, and Indigenous Services Canada in favor of working together to offer offsite services for those underserved in the city looking to hire a human trafficking prevention worker. Next slide, please. The Community Support Program. CSP is in the process of reviewing policies and procedures as well, working on establishment of adjudication disability review committee, training for staff in social inclusion and life stabilization, will enhance case management techniques in working with clients. The Akwazasne Heating Assistant Program, due to the pandemic, staff are making phone calls rather than having clients come to the building for updates on applications. New applications need to call CSP to sign up. The deadline for application is December 10th, 2021. 
Next slide, please. Food security program. Food security program, bi-weekly distribution, dry goods once a month, produce twice a month. Community and quarantine program, receives a few calls every month, looking to have dry goods boxes available in all districts, especially in emergency situations. The food pantry, they're aiming to have up and running in the new year in Jasnaine, the Whoville. Let's work together and go in Oge, former adolescent treatment center. We'll notify the community once it's established, working on writing policies. Next slide. That's all we have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chief Cindy. Okay, next up, we're going to have an update on the holiday dinners by Chief Julie Phillips Jacobs. Yeah, well, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to let everyone know that Council has decided that um, in place of the dinners uh, within each district that we normally do, that we were going to once again be going with the gift card to um, each household. So I'm going to guesstimate that about the week before Christmas, you'll see your district chiefs, chiefs going around um, to deliver the card, the cards to the community members. So I just like to take an opportunity to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and we'll see you soon. Yeah. Okay, and y'all want Chief Julie. Next up, we're gonna have the update on the community watch by Chief Vanessa Adams. Thank you. So on the screen, you'll notice we have a poster and it is a call out for local submissions for the Alcazar and the Community Watch, which is a program aimed to help reduce crime. It involves building relationships with the police and members of our community. This program helps in establishing trust and keeping the community safe. The Akwazasne Mohawk Police is working in partnership with the Mohawk Council of Akwazasne to help create a logo for the Akwazasne Community Watch Program. Community members are invited to submit their designs for consideration. The winning artist with the artist with the winning design will be awarded five hundred dollars. The deadline to submit is December twenty third, twenty twenty one, and all artwork can be submitted in person at the AMPS Police Station in Ganadago or via email to norman.king at aquasusness.ca. So we look forward to seeing your submissions and thank you for participating. Yeah, Chief Vanessa. So next, <clears throat> we'll be getting into the questions that were received from the last uh, general meeting and providing some updates on those questions as well. But one note, I, one thing I'd like to mention is the that additional questions came in late. Those that did come in late today will be addressed at the next general meeting. So if you didn't hear your question addressed at this one, it will be addressed in the our following general meeting. So uh, we're gonna go through uh, the question. So question one will be answered by Chief Vanessa Adam, as well as question number two. Thank you, Chief Edward. Um, question one received is, I believe it would be important to include in the daily COVID case updates, the number of cases that are unvaccinated or vaccinated to show full transparency. Can this be done? If not, why? And our health department response is we do track internally with the information provided by each patient. We do not release this information for the protection of patient confidentiality. Question number two, why do the new MCRs about COVID have no end date? They are permanent policy changes when the Eastern Ontario Health Unit update stated that all current policies and mandates in Ontario are to be lifted in March of 2022, pending all stipulations. Um, the response, any MCR is rescindable and revisable with another MCR. If any policy requires changing, administration will be responsible for bringing an MCR to the council table for their review and acceptance or denial. We will continue to update the COVID-19 related MCRs as needed and based on applicable 
Eastern Ontario Health Unit Ministry Guidelines. Yeah, well, back to you, Edward. Yeah, well, Chief Vanessa. Okay, <clears throat> in regards to the third question that came in, it was around um, um, the voting process for an, uh, Mohawk Council resolution and also explaining the quorum and how it's applied if the, all chiefs aren't present. So in regards to that, quorum is required to vote on all MCRs. According to the council procedure regulations 2021, quorum is required to hold a council meeting, general meeting, special general meeting, or an emergency meeting. Quorum is defined as a minimum of seven members of council. And in the event of a vacancy on council, means a majority of the remaining members of council during the period of the vacancy and for the purpose of an emergency meeting means a minimum of five members of council so that is the answer to that question that was um, sent to us last month so in regards to moving on question four will be addressed by chief sarah Dimo. okay why isn't it mandatory for all chiefs to vote on every MCR? It's understood that exceptions will need to be made for sicknesses or illnesses, but voting on MCRs that affect all employees and community members should be a main responsibility of their position of, as chief. The answer is, as per council procedure regulations, council members are to make it a priority to, to to attend all council related meetings and every effort shall be made to ensure their attendance at such meetings as part of their role and responsibility. If they are unable to attend a meeting, they're responsible to notify the chair and recorder as the nature of their absence. Question number five, can you explain how decisions are made when they are brought to council? Is there a round table discussion, debate, so a well, so a well-rounded perspective is formed of what the community needs and what their concerns are. So everyone's voice when the community can be heard. The answer is each item is brought to council table is given the due diligence of all council members to prepare for the discussion. Unless brought to the table as a late addition and is given time to be discussed fully and wholesomely by all members of council. Thank you, Chief Sarah. <clears throat> so moving on to questions six and seven, they will be addressed by Chief Vince Thompson. So there you go, Nyawa, uh, Edward. Um, I have question number six. It, I have a driveway where Mohawk Council vehicles turn around. Is it possible to get gravel three inch minus to make the turnaround more suitable for vehicles to turn around in? The driveway is on Gawenoge and, and, and it's full of potholes. So upon getting receiving this question, being a DIHE portfolio chief, I talked with the acting director of DIHE and I'm aware, I'm also aware of a policy in place where um, we do not service and maintain private driveways. Um, so that being said, but if we're utilizing, I explained to her that if we're utilizing a certain section of that driveway for MCA buses to turn around in, and if it's causing damage, perhaps we can look into a, a solution that could um, have minor repairs done to that roadway, just so that it doesn't create any more damage and um, the buses can turn around safely. So we're looking into that right now, and uh, hopefully we can have an answer in the near future, maybe at the next uh, general meeting. So that's the response I got from uh, for question number six. Question number seven is, uh, can we have street lighting all Galvanoga roads to deter illegal activities to provide, to provide more safety for the residents of Galvanoga? With that, um, <clears throat> DIHE has begun the process of preparing our RFP. RFP is a request for proposals to obtain an electrical consultant to prepare lighting study drawings and cost estimates. Add to the discussion with the multi-jurisdictional table. The multi-jurisdictional table is a, um, a table that has uh, multiple, um, I would say entities, MTO, MTQ, 
Infrastructure Canada, um, ISC, and, and us sitting at the table so we can do cost shares on certain projects in the future. But street lighting in all three districts are needed, which has been identified and keeps coming forth from community members. There are 14 lights out in which was reported uh, this past fall. The roads manager obtained quotes and only one was received. A PO was issued and a contractor to begin its scheduled uh, repair for um, this past Friday. Um, I mean, not this past Friday, but October 29th, just before Halloween. And just to give a little feedback on the uh, safety for all residents, we have a light uh, street lighting strategy in place. We have maps. We've identified certain locations that uh, are highly traveled, highly um, public uh, people walking on them. So we're targeting those areas for now. But if there's any additional areas that should be raised as a concern to light up to ensure the safety and well-being of our people, then please share that information with us. And I think we can include it in our strat plan for street lighting. Yeah, go on. Yeah, well, thanks on that. <clears throat> so moving on to the next question, it was in regards to who is the mental health liaison that assists with apps. So at this time, we are still waiting on additional information. Uh, oh, Chief Vanessa? Yeah, so the mental health, um... Officer Li Mental Health Liaison with AMPS is Constable Brandon Boire, B-O-I-R-E. So if you have any concerns or questions, that's who you can contact. Thank you. Hey, yeah, y'all want Vanessa for that. Okay, so moving on, we'll go to question nine again, Chief Vanessa, if you would like to assist us with that one. Okay. So hi, could council provide an update on the homeless project going on in Cornwall, a detailed account on what money spent so far and where they came from. Also any MCRs passed for this and an update on the future expenses expected. Okay, so the answer is if the community member is referring to the Alcazasne Care Center, the project is ongoing that the city, the city of Cornwall waiting for the uh, permit to open the facility. There are some issues with sprinkler systems that has been ongoing. The center is open. The center is open. Community members have the opportunity to wash their laundry, pick up food um, and shower. So those services are available to our homeless community members. Um, and the MCR is number 20 slash 21 dash 310. Funding is provided by the Family Wellness and Indigenous Services of Canada. Expenses to date 20-21 is a total right now of 136,199.12. Thank you. Okay, now Vanessa on that. So <clears throat> moving on to the next question will be uh, addressed by Chief Cindy Francis Mitchell. Okay, that's question 10. Uh, 11, actually. 11, okay, so question 11. How many weed stores are legally operating on the territory? How much revenue has been collected to date? And how is the revenue from sales benefiting the community? What about grow ops? So the information I received from FDAB, we currently have 11 retailers that are licensed, four cultivators, all retails are operational. Only one cultivator is operational. Four retailers and three cultivators. Going over this, four retailers, one cultivator. Ganadiga, three re retailers, zero cultivators, and Jasnina has none. Um, social contribution fee. Uh, collected for the fiscal year is $69,000. $363.90. There has nothing yet been determined on to what the um, contributions will be um, made to for future at this time. Thank you. Hey, yeah, well, Cindy. So um, going back, there was question 10 that will be deferred to the next general meeting as we are actually still waiting on some of the uh, information to come forth. So <clears throat> moving on, we'll go to uh, Chief Dwayne Thomas to 
answer question 12. Segal, the question was, um, can you report to the community how the funding for your retreat was made available? Will this report be accessible in the annual audit? So the funds for the council retreat and training session was derived from council surplus funds. All the financial information will be included in the annual audit as part of the Akwazasne Financial Administrative Law. Thank you. Y'all were waiting for that uh, response. In addition to that, I wanted to provide the community with uh, an update on the council retreat, which was more of a professional development uh, that took place. So on November 29th and 30th, council members gathered together to focus on team building, facilitated by A to Z consulting and Cumberland strategies. So over these two days, council focused <clears throat> on governance training, such as the responsibilities, challenges, and roles of a chief, discussed and explored different scenarios that could be considered conflicts of interest, and also worked towards advancing the strategic plan. All of these areas examined will help better council members in their current roles for the betterment of Akwazasne. There, there will potentially be a follow-up meeting with management in the new year to discuss this training, which created lots of conversation and goals for the current council. So that's a quick update on what we had done at our professional development. So that's it for the questions that we had to respond to in regards and the ones that we still didn't get to, again, will be deferred to the next general meeting. So at, at this time, <clears throat> opening it for up for any other questions from uh, community. Uh, okay, I see Crystal. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we're good. Crystal Bay Yungyaks. I would like to begin by thanking Council and Grand Chief, even though he is not here today, for hosting this general meeting this evening. I have a couple topics that each are followed by questions or inquiries. The first topic. CBSA. My first question is, who holds the public safety portfolio? Okay, I have uh, Chief Vanessa Adams and Chief Julie Phillips Jacobs. Oh, okay. Yeah, as well as, uh, is there one more hand? Uh, Chief April Phillips, mm -hmm. April Adams Phillips. Now, this would be more specifically for the CBSA portfolio. Yes, all three? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, secondly, I would like to know if the MCA or by council, um, if they've have entered into an agreement with the chief of the Cornwall with the current chief of the Cornwall Port of Entry stating, if the current chief of the port of Cornwall is removed or relocated, that the Mohawk Council of Akuzasne will pull away from the negotiating table. Can you confirm or negate this statement? Do any of the portfolio chiefs have an answer for that one? Okay, what we'll do, uh, Crystal, is we'll we make note of that in our um, meeting minutes, okay. and then we'll uh, address that at our council table, and we'll get a response as an action item for the next general meeting, if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. Well. So that will now lead me to my second topic. Okay. 
So topic number two is I'm naming it accountability. So my second question, over the past few weeks, there has been some very disturbing events and detrimental rumor mill gossip throughout the organization and community. Did an inappropriate incident occur on November 15th, 2021 during your weekly council meeting? Keep in mind that the administration staff and other MCA employees were witness to this incident. Can I get a nod, please? On, in regards to that question, Crystal, I do believe the minutes still have to be MCR'd on that. So at this time, I don't think we can respond to that until that process has gone through. If I'm not certain on this protocol, if any of the other chiefs want to correct it, then uh, please do so. Otherwise, this is, to my knowledge and understanding. I was just asking for a simple confirmation whether it did or did not happen. Uh, a yes or no. I think it kind of falls in line with the details of the minutes that had taken place, even the actions of it. So I would kind of suggest or recommend that once that it gets uh, the M once it gets MCR, then I think we can go back to that. As okay. I don't want to, I don't want to put myself or any of council members in the uh, position of giving a response in regards to something that has not finished going through its process of being made public. I hope that kind of helps address that. Mm. Well, I guess it has to, if it's not gonna go any further, correct? Yeah, yeah, so, mm -hmm. but it's noted. And um, once that it's, it'll be made noted in a minute and then going forward, We'll, uh, we'll address it once the process is done. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll go. You know, you know, is there anything else? I just had to. Okay. Nyamo yeah, well, Crystal for your question. No. Okay. We have a uh, next question by Connie. Connie Lazor, go ahead. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, just a couple of follow up items. Mm -hmm. I believe in September, I asked if we could in the district of just nine get um, information in our mailbox with regards to the fiber to the home. I had asked indicating that even myself, I couldn't attend the last update meeting and um, nothing follows those update meetings. So we don't know what's happening with the fiber. What I did get is Rogers, information sheet um, promoting their business selling you know doing their 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 job to to obtain customers um we don't know where our fiber is at hot and i know that we had to wait for a tower to get put in that i didn't know was part of the project but that put stalled it going to the other district stalled it um so really, you know, like we can't all get on because of technology and fiber and lack thereof. So I had asked if we could get an update in our mailboxes and I haven't seen that since. Okay. Um, uh, Connie, real quick, um, in regards to that fiber to the home, I do believe on the Economic Development's Facebook page, <clears throat> as well as other communications that have gone out there's a Zoom uh, meeting update for SNI that will be taking place. But as a follow-up, uh, I will uh, actually address that in an email to ensure that uh, new mailers can go out and so that uh, the district of SNI is um, up to date on it. Okay, thank you. All right, My no. second comment, um, last month I had sent two questions. 
And one of them was asking what community policing meant. The second part of that question was asking council, council if they felt community policing was happening. Um, thank you for the definition that was so long that I got lost in it. Um, and that came from the chief of police. It didn't come from the council members to, to gauge whether, you know, if we thought community policing was happening here. And so I just wanted to do follow up to see if eventually that can be answered by council. Thank you. So Connie, when you're talking about community policing, are you, is a referencing like the community watch? Community watch, um, that was a neighborhood watch program that we started with one of the police officers. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, and this is my mind, I'm asking you what you think. As far as community policing, there and there's got to be more engagement with your community to know who they are and understand them. Mm -hmm. There's got to be programs available for people to reach out and go to, um, and enforcement of your community laws. There's a number of things, but I don't. Uh, the definition provided at the last meeting. I'm sorry, it was just so long I got lost. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a good definition. But I don't know that that was our definition our community of Akwazasne. And I'm just wondering what council thinks and, and do they feel community policing is happening in your community? Okay. That's just, it was just a question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Connie. So what I'm getting at is you you just want more clarity from council's perspective on that in regards to that. So I see uh, Chief Vanessa had her hand up. So I think she wanted to provide a response to that, Vanessa. Yes, thank you, Connie. Uh, attending the police commission meeting, um, one was canceled, we attended one and this item was brought up. So as um, one of the things is we really need um, police officers in our community that really care about our community and know our um, community members. And it's um, it's not always the case, right? Um, we, I come from a time when officers patrolled on foot in the village and everyone knew everybody and it was really important to show our elders and our community members, um, you know, that we could, we could trust the police force. And I think uh, that's one of the goals we have as public safety now go, moving forward. And I'm sure it has been an ongoing goal um, with new members coming in, members leaving. I think it's very important that we keep pushing for this community policing that the definition provides and make sure that our service provides that same um, service to our community members. So yes, I will provide an update um, as soon as we have more information. And I assure you that we are working towards a safer and a more community policing um, atmosphere for our community. Yeah, well. Thank you. Okay, hey, Nyawo Vanessa for that additional information and Nyawo Connie for your questions. <clears throat> so I also, there's a question coming from Karen. Yes, thank you. I have a couple of questions or a question and a comment. Uh, first question, DTS uh, portfolio, who are you? Maybe that a show of hands. So I have, okay. uh, Karen, can you see them all? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, I'd like to see the budget for the road and the line item for fixing um, roads. What is their budget? I don't think it's uh, up to community members or workers to go out and fix the potholes that are in our area or the place I work. Um, it is really um, terrible to drive on. And we've had community members or a community member in my neighborhood that personally used his machinery and fixed the potholes. Not all of them, but some of them. And also with Yoha here too, we have quite a bit of students, vendors, buses, instructors that have to come down that road. So I'd like to see what the budget is 
to repair those roads. Okay, um, so Karen, in regards to that, what um what I would suggest, and uh, <clears throat> council will have a discussion on this, is for the next general meeting, perhaps we could have um, Department of Infrastructure, Housing, and Environment do a presentation on the roads budget and all the specific uh, details that you're requesting. Does that sound yes? Different? Okay. Yes, that that'd be great, and um, would be nice to see the DTS portfolio um, give us a little bit of detail on their lobbying efforts to find funding. I mm -hmm. mean, it was a great uh, lobbying effort when we were able to get the Wade LaFrance Road um, incorporated with our emergency planning when they did all the new paving and and whatnot in that area. So, I'd like to see where we are with our budget on that. Okay, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have that discussion. And um, just to also make a further note on that in regards to the budget. So the federal budget and the um, prime minister's, uh, he did his address. And so we're just going through the uh, speech he made in regards to where there's the a lot of the funding that's being allocated for the federal budget. And so what we could do is we'll, for, in regards to the upcoming next general meeting, we'll review that federal budget and look at what those dollars that are allocated that could be going into that area as well. And we'll look into Quebec as well, because I think the provinces are, they had their budget day last week. So <clears throat> we'll take a look at that as well and see what uh, dollar amounts have been allocated for that and see what we okay. can come up with, okay? Sounds good. All right. And then no. I just my comment for um, Crystal's question mm -hmm. with regards to your council meeting minutes. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's, you have a uh, grad chief who gets on social media and gives updates of your weekly meetings and what has been discussed and what has been put out there on MCR before your meeting minutes get approved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it's a simple question that was answered and asked of council, you solely have one administrative responsibility position that you're responsible for. And I think those questions should be answered or an acknowledgement that that's exactly what council and grand chief are responsible for. It's accountability. Mm -hmm. So if you would like, um, I think uh, Krista could provide the questions that she has so that you can have that discussion um, in your next council meeting and provide an update on where you're, where, what actions are going to be taken. Sure, yeah, well, Karen, for that suggestion. So Crystal, if you want, um, you could email it to myself as I'm chairing this meeting tonight. And what I can do is I can uh, follow that up with uh, council and we can get that answer to you. Okay, no, okay, thank Karen. you. No, Karen. Uh, Chief Vince, you had your hand up. Yeah, no, Edward. Um, just for FYI, we reestablished the multi-jurisdictional table that's uh, gonna be addressing some of our roads uh, reconstruction needs. And, and, and we already talked to uh, Owen, um, Ministry of uh, Transportation of Ontario to discuss the uh, operations and maintenance of roadways. So we're looking forward to a upcoming meeting that's going to be scheduled in the near future to address the um, um, operations and management of roads in Quebec. We are, we are we already have a Quebec um, MTQ agreement, but we're looking to see um, to add a little bit further to that and start the uh, negotiations before the existing agreement uh, ends, because it's going to be ending in the near future. So we need to have those dialogues. And just for my information, the roadways that you're referencing, is it Sunday Drive and Fisherman's Lane? or One or is it both? Karen, did she get off? No, oh, she's still on. Karen, um, Chief Vince was uh, just trying to clarify the roads you were speaking of. 
He's referencing Yoha Hill Road, where she works. Yoha Hill yes. Road. I, I, got, yes. I got that. I got that one. But I need to know: Is it Fisherman's Drive where she actually lives? Fisherman's she, Lane, yeah. Sunday Drive, and Friday Drive. And Friday Drive. Okay, I will check the horseshoe. The, <laughs> I will check the uh, strat plan for roads and see if your roads are on the list. Yeah. Check off for check for all of them. They're all got big potholes. Agreed. So yeah, yes. going back to uh, sorry, Vince, but going back to my statement earlier. Um, and putting it on the agenda for the next general meeting, we could have uh, DIHE do the presentation on identifying all the roads in the district of Snai. Well, just another FYI, the multi-jurisdictional table is going to be talking about all roads. No. Okay, no, Vince. Okay. Uh, is there any more questions? Uh, Connie, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Just a quick comment. I, I think Chief Thompson had mentioned earlier uh, RFP for street lighting. Mm -hmm. Can we look at um, solar versus electrical? You know, our power in Snai ain't the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just to uh, comment on that, um, there are some areas that need to be lit up in the uh, Snai district, and the power line does pull away from the roadway quite a bit so in those areas there is a possibility of solar powered street lighting in in those areas and if you have any other street lighting issues and concerns um all, all districts have a uh, portfolio chief sitting on diehe and if you can bring some of it to their attention so that way we can talk about and discuss it at our next portfolio now yeah well but i think moving forward technology wise and energy and whatnot, maybe all of our street lights should be solar, not just those difficult to reach by power. Thank you. Okay, now Connie. <clears throat> so next I have a question from PJ. Sego, I have a couple of questions. Um, first one, as you had made reference earlier, I guess to previous, um, information about a retreat where was that held and what did it cost so that was uh, the retreat was held back in the north gower place called strathmere and it was more or less it was a professional development that took, had taken place and it was uh, i had read the update earlier i'm not sure if you were logged on and heard it but it was, yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. So yeah. for the approximate cost of it, I'd have to find that out and then I can get that to you because I'm not aware of what the total mm -hmm. cost of it was. Okay. Uh, another question I have is with regard to the financial administration law, chiefs mm -hmm. on council are supposed to provide your strategic plan, your multi-year plan, um, to the community within a certain time frame. Um, just wondering when that was going to happen. Okay, so in the beginning of uh, November, we had done, we had started uh, our new strategic planning with A to Z. Excuse me. And we did that in participation with management. And so it, um, during our professional development at uh, Strathmere, we were um, working with A to Z as well. And it is there, she, she had provided the first set of raw data that had came from our first session. So that is actually underway. And uh, we have another meeting coming up in regards to the information that was given within, uh, I think by right after the holidays. And from that point, we should have a majority of the information underway and hopefully we can get it from that one section at least near finalized, not finalized, but further along that we can start the, um, possibly presenting it to the community. But, um, Sorry. I'll get, but I'll get further clarification on that um, and I can get that to you or even provide an update at the next general meeting specifically because I don't want to actually 
without further understanding how many more steps we have to go through to get this underway, I don't want to miss uh, mislead you in answering your okay, question. Okay, just just following timelines according to the law. Yeah. The other question I have, again, with the uh, financial administration law, a uh, document that's supposed to be submitted by each council member, I believe it's by September and annually after that, uh, about any potential conflict of interest, that document's supposed to be submitted. Have you done that? Actually, that document, uh, we had discussed that over our professional development um, this past week. So that is something we will be getting addressing and that'll be coming forth as well. So yes, we how are soon? aware of that. How, how soon will you be doing that document? Uh, <clears throat> I do believe we'll be discussing that next week and finalizing the, that one particular document. Who currently sits as your chair and vice chair for that finance committee? So the current chair, um, I believe, is Chief Cindy Francis Mitchell. And the vice chair is Chief Julie Phillips Jacobs. And as former chair from last term, I had discussed with them that I would uh, participate in a system in any means possible with uh, the work we had done last term going forward. And then looking at the foul and seeing the um, pretty much the next steps that we need to get established in getting that uh, new finance committee set up with the community members, because I do believe there was a call out. And um, I think we're at that we're at that um, juncture in getting those seats and positions filled because it was for four community members. When will the audit be made available to the community? It should have been out around September. Yeah, right now the audit is currently underway. The two major audits were done and there's several smaller audits that are still in the process right now. So we're hoping we can get um, a uh, clear, a more defined timeline as to when those will be completed and then we can get that presented to the community. Next question is for the public safety portfolios. It's with respect to the Akwesas Nemohawk Police Service. I understand that they have entered into a lease agreement to retrofit a facility to move to the island. Is there is that true? And when do you anticipate that happening? Yeah, Chief Tim with his hand up. So do you want to respond to that, Chief Tim? No, my hand's been up in regards to strategic planning that she brought up. Okay. Uh Paula, do you mind if he answers the strategic planning part and then we can get into public safety to address the other the next your uh, current question? Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Chief Dooley. So with the strategic planning, there is a, a lead group that works with A2Z uh, in the planning for the strategic plan. We did have the two-day session. It is important to realize there is no cost for our strategic planning session other than the rental of space. The A2Z has not will not be charging us anything in, re in regards to her team coming in to assist us. Um, we have a number of sessions planned. They are currently going back to the program managers and directors to have a discussion with them. And we will have another um, leadership session with them in sometime in January. And then she'll go back and have another session, I believe in February, but it is all laid out in the plan as to how her approach is going. And we should finalize a full uh, strategic plan probably by March is what we're looking at. No. Okay, so we're, we're going to go to public safety in regards to your question with the amps. In regards to the question with the amps, conceptual drawings of the potential police station have been um, created, but absolutely nothing is final at this time. Thank you. Yeah, Vanessa, on that one. 
so for clarification, conceptual drawings for an existing facility to be retrofitted or is it a new building? The structure is there. It has not been used or utilized for anything. It is owned by a community member. So therefore it's a, it's a private um, property. And like I said, the drawings um, conceptual have been created, but like I said, nothing is um, uh, final at this time. What was the cost to have the conceptual drawings done? I'm not privy to that at this moment, but I can get back to you on that. Is there a call out to the general community when any department in, or program in MCA is looking to potentially lease a facility and community members can submit, not to purchase land, but rent facilities and so forth? To my knowledge, I do believe so, but um, perhaps somebody that's in the infrastructure portfolio could um, clarify it. Chief Vince. I, I can uh, give some information to that. Um, as of right now, the way it stands, um, we don't pull out we don't really advertise what's needed, but if a community build a structure or infrastructure that would, and he doesn't, um, how would you say, and he has an interest to partner up with Mohawk Council on that, and that's how these things uh, come to light. And certain programs will look at it and they'll think it's uh, be suitable for their programming or their department and then that's how we get informed on discussions being had and then as things move forward we're just getting reported on the progress and as it moves forward even further the department will probably budget for whatever is needed to suit their uh, program needs or whatnot if it's if it's deemed to be um, ready so to get it ready to uh, for them to move around um, that's all I have right now, but if you need more in-depth information, perhaps uh, we can look into it and see what we have. Hey, Follow up to that. If there's conceptual design, is that is the intention to move the police service out of Ganadigo into Gawehnoge with substations in the other two districts? You figure there would be some kind of plan before they did conceptual drawings, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone want to assist in answering that? Chief Joanne? Well, when, when and if that happens, and I spoke to the answer, um, uh, Leanne O'Brien and uh, she said, if anything happens, it's not even going to be till fall of next year. And if that happens, St. Regis will remain, uh, um, it'll still be like, uh, what do they call that? Like a substation, just like we have in Snai. And uh, your question too was about the JIT team that's renting out for that place on the island. They're going to be letting go of that if and when it's agreed that they are actually going to move into this new place. Okay, Nyama, Joanne. Nyama, is the community going to be sought for input as to whether or not the main police station is going to move to the island? Like, you know, with respect to time frames to get from Cornwall Island to the other two districts in the event of an emergency, how is that going to work with U.S. Customs? Even if it's anticipated to be in the fall of 2022. I mean, how are things now? I think uh, in listening to how you're um, structuring your question on that, Paula, I, uh, I kind of have to agree with you and how in that, um, in that sense, because you look at it as it, it goes just as well with in regards to the ambulance service. 
So when you look at that, um, I think it's something that pu um, public safety portfolio can address at its next portfolio meeting coming up. And, you know, I do think it's a good subject to get some dialogue going in regards to kind of having the um, Mohawk police staff kind of, again, this is just my perspective that it looked, it would go and kind of spread them out in all three districts, which reduces the response time. So I like, again, um, I got Chief Vanessa with her hand up. Uh, she could uh, add some more information to this, but I'm just sharing my perspective on this. I just wanted to ensure that. Chief Vanessa. Thank you, Chief Edward. Perhaps we can take the questions that you have presented and bring those back to public safety and provide a detailed response um, within our next general meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll pull up for your question. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any more questions? Okay, having seen none, I'm going to move to. Hello, Eddie. Oh. oh. Hey, how are you? Good. Uh, I didn't Dave see the White. hand. I didn't see the hand up. Oh, this is Dave White on the island. Oh, hey, Dave. Long time hey, not here. Yeah, how are you guys doing? You want your picture? Oh, everyone's doing good. And how Listen, are you doing? Oh, everything's uh, honky dory. Okay. Listen, um, since I've been following, I know I haven't been online and I, I don't really favor this way of, uh, you know, yeah. having meetings, but. Uh, Listen, in 2013, Bernard Valcourt signed an um, agreement in principle on this self-government. And you guys have been working on this self-government for a long time. And finan the financial administration law, which to me wasn't clarified very well with the community. A lot of people had a lot of questions, but it seems to me you're going forward, you're going to pass this. Now that financial administration law is part of your self-government, your nation building process. So I was just wondering, with this financial administration law, what is the next step in your nation building process? Like, what, what, what do you do next? I have more questions, but at this time, could you tell me what comes after you approve this financial administration law part of your nation building? Okay, Dave, I think... Uh... I just want to provide some clarification. The Akwazasana Financial Administration Law was put in place in regards to the 10-year grant. Again, this is to my knowledge and recollection of when this, this process took place. So it wasn't part of the uh, self-government agreement. And so on that one, going to your next uh, question, the self-government agreement is still under negotiations right now. It is, uh, I act on a, I sit on the negotiating team along with uh, Chief Vince, Chief Cindy Francis Mitchell and Chief Joanne Swamp along with Grand Chief. And so we are just in the process of doing our main table preparation and getting ready to get back at our main table uh, negotiations. But um, I'm not sure where you had gotten your information, but uh, I can assure you it is very far from being done. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of issues that we're really um, diving into and discussing, and um, they're very substantive matters in regards to the impact that would have on our community. So. You know, this is, um, it's still in discussion. So I, it, if someone had brought this to your attention that it was going to be somewhere in the near future to be uh, brought to the community and um, to be uh, consulted and voted on, it's not even near there yet. Well, I was told that it was about 80% uh, complete. And the reason I ask about the financial administration laws because mm -hmm. I got it from your meetings. It was in discussion back then. 
And one of the things under with the tax commission and everything included, it talked about the financial administration law that you're going to control all the finances to the band council and take it out of the hands of the government that you want a more control over what how the spending is uh, accumulated in the community. So that's where I got it was for some of your meetings that said that's part of the step of nation building. You know, I, it mentioned a 10 year grant, but it didn't say that the financial administration law, the law itself was part of a step that they incurred to approve this um, self-government um, that you're, you guys are trying to get in place. Now, as far as um, this uh, nation building process that uh, I was told was 80% complete, mm -hmm. I called the main office and I talked to uh, the guy in charge and he told me, he said, right now we're about 80%. And 80% sounds like you're pretty close to assigning some agreement. So that's what my concerns are about. And I know part of the nation building process, you not only have the financial administration law, but you have other things that you have to put in place. Like you said, there's a lot to it yeah. now. And, and the, the national one that they had that they wanted First Nations to sign had a tax commission. Remember, we mentioned Manny Jules and the things he was doing. Yeah. But I was just wondering in this new process that you're getting, is there going to be a local tax commission put together? As far as the fine, uh, as far as this nation building process goes, not to my knowledge, Dave. As I stated earlier, I I'm one of the negotiators that sit at that table, and I review that draft agreement. And nowhere in there do I see anything of that nature that you're uh, you're describing. Um, but I will say that in regards to uh, eighty percent being done. I'm looking at it and as I see it, 80% of what's complete are the, we could call them the, the sections of the agreement that are, I would say pretty easy to, to get them to agree to. And the reason why I stated earlier that this is gonna take, this is still gonna take quite some time is because the 20% that is actually left to negotiate, that is the one, we, those are the issues that we're putting, we're pushing really hard to get Canada to accept. And we have not been getting um, any responses as of yet. And as you're aware, you know, with there was a recent election that uh, was called and taken place, that actually stopped all of our negotiations. And as well, because the reshuffle of the cabinet, we had to wait to see for the new cabinet to get set up so we can continue our meetings and discussion on getting some answers from Canada in regards to the, to the sections that we had posed most of the questions um, that we wanted addressed going forward. So when someone tells you it's 80% complete, you could honestly look at it as 80% of a lot of the easy stuff they would agree to, but it's the last 20 that is the one that they really are having a hard time digesting. So yeah, I hope that kind of puts a little bit more clarification on uh, that current, the status of that current um, situation that we're actually working on. Yeah, Eddie, I really appreciate you coming up and, and giving that answer because for a long time, we've had that in question. For a long time, we had a lot of discussions be before this pandemic when we were having the meetings. And I was just wondering, you know, we've never seen an update, the negotiating process, where we're at or anything uh, to the community so people can understand exactly what, what's going on. So I appreciate it and uh, thanks. thanks for the answer. No, Dave. So Dave, what I'll do is uh, going forward in the new year, um, I think before we break for the holiday, I know we have uh, a couple more meetings before we break. And now uh, I'll put it out there to um, Nation Building Department as well as our portfolio to see if we can't uh, do a presentation in the new year at the next general meeting. So that way it really provides some clarity to the community on where that uh, 
nation building is actually at. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, Dave, take care. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Next question. Oh, man. I have a next question from Vincent. Hi, everybody. Um, I just finally was able to connect because our connections in SNI are still really crap. Um, so where are you in the agenda right now? Uh, you're, our, you're the last person with a question and then we're gonna be going into our resolution next. Did you do the presentation on uh, the community watch already? Uh, yes, we did. Okay. Who did that presentation so I can follow up with them? Community watch was uh, Chief Vanessa Adams. Is it on a, is there a, um, a, like a PowerPoint on it or something? No, it was a verbal update. So, so you know, um, Vanessa, do you, are you okay with just providing another one? Sure. Vincent, what we're doing right now at this point, we are doing a call out for logo submissions. So the Acquisition Community Watch is a program aimed to help reduce crime, as you know, and the Acquisition Mohawk Police is working in partnership with the Mohawk Council of Acquisition to help to create a logo for the Acquisition Community Watch program. So that's where we're at right now. Community members are invited to submit their designs for consideration. So the deadline to submit um, the artwork is December 23rd, 2021, and that can be dropped off in person at the Mohawk Police Station or to norman.king at alquazasna.ca. So we're doing the logo um, contest first, and then working on next steps. Thank you. I'm not interested in the logo contest. I think that's just, I'm what I'm interested in is, uh, Kind of boots on the ground what are we doing to make the community safer working with community members and police mm -hmm. i totally respect that but i also think that um you know when we had our meetings we also need the buy-in from the community and this was our first step in trying to get that buy-in from each of the community we need them to understand you know we need them to really take hold of it because without the community, we're really not going to get anywhere. And as you know, we, yes, we've heard it from yourself and a few others on here tonight, but um, you know, there's others that maybe don't know about it. Or if, you know, we get our youth involved in, you know, creating the logo and that that's what we're hoping is to get that buy-in. Yeah, I understand that. Uh... Julie, but uh, like the, Norman did this presentation several months ago, right? And uh, and so I think he kind of like got people interested at that time. And then now we're having a nice logo contest, not to put it down or anything, um, but the logo contest, uh, I'm not sure what that has to do with getting getting the work started, the, the real work started. Yes, I completely understand that, Vincent. Some of the, the materials that we will be handing out to community members, which include stickers, signage, we would like to brand it with the logo so that we take ownership of this program and so that we're not just copying another program, but we're completely making it our own. And I think with that um, and the recognizability of this, this program, I think we can gain more community support in uh, moving things forward and helping to make our community much safer. Thank you. What kind of some community support do you have so far? Like, what, 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 what has Norman or somebody else on a team, a public, uh, public uh, safety team, like what, what, hmm. And so that, uh, yeah. when we have, Meeting with Norman last week, um, we had discussed, you know, to, you know, we talked about this logo contest and to get it like a kickstart from this. Uh, from, from what we understand is there was a survey that went out at that time, uh, like uh, when you talked about it back uh, several months ago, and there yeah. was very uh, limit, uh, very few that engaged in the survey. So it was very disappointing. So this is another way to go out and try to like 
Vanessa and Julie said, brand it, make it our own, um, give the community uh, a chance to, you know, we need the buy-in from the community in order for, for really, for this to really take off. Okay. Uh, I, it sounds like that's your uniform. Um, and it goes back again to, uh, again, a survey. Um, a few months ago, there was some, there was a survey done uh, to the community about, uh, uh, about the CBSA. Do you guys remember that? Um, could you um, be more specific, Vincent, on which on the survey? The CBSA one? Are you still there? Oh, did we lose her? Okay, so we lost Vincent. Uh, we're gonna move on. Or before we move on, um, just to let council know. If we can... Edward? Yes, go ahead. You got a hand up from Abraham Francis. Thank you. Yeah, before I go on to Abraham, I just wanted to let council know if we could get uh, additional information on the survey that uh, Vincent had questioned. Okay, thank you, Vanessa. Moving on, we're gonna go to Abraham Francis. Go ahead. Hi, this is like the business from the floor section, right? Yes, it is. Okay, um, I just wanted to make sure I was asking my question at the right time. Um, so uh, I was interested in, um, in understanding what is the recourse for somebody that was terminated under circumstances, um, under particular circumstances that <laughs> appear to be an overreach by a particular individual at uh, Mohawk Council. Hmm. Could you repeat that question? It's. Uh... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was asking, um, I'm asking a question on behalf of uh, my older brother and, and they were let go. Um, and it seems to be a case of overreach by a particular individual at Mohawk Council. And so I was wondering what was the, what is the process for recourse um, to getting clarity and um, Trying, trying to figure out what is what. How do we, um, how do we address this situation? I can add more detail to the situation if you would like. Um, forgive me if uh, I'm not hearing you straight, but um, just this sounds like this is uh, an employee with with Mohawk Council. Um, actually, previous. it was a previous employee with Mohawk Council, somebody who has been trying to work for Mohawk Council and has been denied, well, was denied employment the first time and then was recently let go after being hired by Mohawk Council. Okay, I think, um, and again, if somebody on council can assist me, but in what I'm hearing, if it's anything in regard re involving an employee employer manner matter, then I think that uh, would be more private as opposed to being held in a public forum. So mm -hmm. I think if you emailed that to um, council, then we could actually have that further discussion. Oh, so you, like you guys want like a letter straight to you guys? Or just an email inquiry, or, or I, I don't. Again, I got chiefs on council here that can assist in this if possible. I'm just going to the best of my knowledge right now. HR. Julie, do you have that one? Okay. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Dose. So there, there is a complaints process that can be filed. That application, that complaints process is on our website. He needs to complete that and file it with administrative, file it with HR, I guess, or administration, mm -hmm. one of them. And they'll go from there. There are certain timelines that must be followed in regards to that when they're going to reach back to you. 
And the complaints process is on MCA's website, correct? That is correct. Okay. So that's the first step? And so that would just be our first step to begin the process of looking into what kind of recourse we could that could be have had in this situation? Right, they'll have a full review of that process. All right, well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Abraham. Okay, Vincentette, you had gotten cut off, so if we want to pick up where you left off, you had uh, mentioned something yeah. re um, regarding a CBSA survey. Yeah, my my electronics just got kicked off. I got kicked off. Um, yes, there was a. Can you? Um, everybody's frozen right now on my screen. There's nobody moving. Okay, Do, we, can, we, can got we can hear you. You can though. hear me though. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, there was a survey done by uh, in regards to the CBSA's um, and Mohawk Council's work that was done to, to set up the domestic lane for people basically coming from Cornwall Island. Do you, does anybody on council remember there's a, a recent survey that was done of that? And you, uh, Chief Vince? Yes, I'm aware of the survey. Um, me as a person coming from SNI and uh, and have, working in St. Regis and many people live in St. Regis too. Um, one of the things I had put in the survey were asked for additional comments or if I'm happy with what has been done and stuff like that. I put a bunch of stuff in it on, in different areas of that survey that that asks for the uh, that ask for that Indian lane back, basically, you know, just to cut to the point, it's to basically ask for a, 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 the, the way it used to be before they moved from the island. Remember where uh, that one last lane would be where anybody from Saint or Snai or Cornwall Island yeah, people, would go through? People, huh? people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and um, before yeah, the, I remember that. I recall that. It's uh, before Ling. Yeah, I, I, everything's breaking up. I'm sorry, uh, but um, where is where is the results of that survey? I guess is one of the things that I'd like to like when we're asked to be be participants in a survey as a community at large, I think we should be able to get access to the survey results in a fairly decent time from when the res uh, survey was taken. Um, where are the results of that survey and can we take, can you, can you publish them? So Vincent, that what we'll do is um, the, the, Chiefs that were um, working with the CBSA committee uh, will address that and then we'll see where that information actually is and then we can get that uh, information uh, out to the community like the results of what had taken place. Yeah, and um, the other thing too, and I've kind of looked into it, but d uh, Edward, don't you agree that if you're, if somebody's going to spend money on a survey and get the input of the community, that the community, uh, that not only the, like, I don't even know if you've, if you've seen the results of that survey as council members. No, I don't recall seeing the results and you're right, which is why I was, before you got cut off, I was just trying to get more clarification on what you were referring to. But yeah. then after you explained it, it does ring a bell. And so we'll see about where that results lies and uh -huh. then how we can get that information back and then go from there. But don't you think that anytime the council is, participates in a census or survey or whatever, where you're asking for people their, for, their, uh, for their participation, that that should come back out on a regular basis, not just this one, but uh, anything else that is done in the future? Yes, I, I agree with you on that. You're, you're correct, because it's basically the community input. So the community should see the results of the yeah. should see the outcome and, of it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so having said that, uh, one of the things that was also surveyed of the community not that long ago is whether or not it, and it's been done at least one other time because I participate in these surveys. Cause I think, I think you're putting them out there as a very important step to something else is there was a transportation survey that was done maybe four, four to six months ago. Um, and uh, my understanding is that that was a survey that was uh, worked on by H health, a Department of Health, and maybe D DCSS, uh, social social services, in trying to figure out if we have community folk out there that need and would use uh, some form of public transportation. Do you remember that as well? I do recall that one. Yeah, the public transportation survey. Yeah. yeah. What are the results of those, of that survey, please? Um, if somebody on those portfolios would like to address that. Uh... Okay, so Vincent, what I think I'm going to do as an action item with that is we can get we can do a compilation of the surveys that uh, have been done. Um, most recently, as well as the ones from possibly the past in those areas. And then we can actually get the, see if we can't get communications to have that information out to the community. Well, that I think is an excellent idea. I'm glad you thought of it. Um, but uh, one of the things I would like as well is that uh, that be, be uh, a, an agenda item on the next um, general meeting, please. Yeah, I'm actually writing that down right now. Uh, Maybe a presentation by the portfolio holders uh, of whoever commissioned those surveys. Mm -hmm. and, and not only what the results of the survey are, but mm -hmm. what are the next steps to, if, if there's a, a big thing about transportation saying, yes, we should do it, what are the next steps? If there's a, a big thing that's saying, yeah, we should also include uh, a lane uh, or broaden the scope of that lane, uh, the domestic lane, that we should broaden the the community that needs to cross that uh, cross there and we use it two or three times a day and we're just in the same uh, uh, we're just in the same lane uh, waiting lane as everybody else coming from the United States I don't think that's right because this is Mohawk territory and we should be able to uh, we're all, all we're doing is traveling in transit, you know, we're mm -hmm. coming from snot, we're coming from Canada to Canada. And, and we should be able to uh, be able to do that. Can, can the people who can the chiefs that work with uh, CBSA, can you raise uh, your Vincent, hand? Vincent? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, Vanessa, before I go to you, I want, I just want her to conclude what her statement was, and then have you give a update on a multitude of questions that's in her statement. Yeah, Thanks. and so, and so, uh, Edward, I just, I, I, I'm not ready as a community person and as an advocate for other community persons, um, uh, my family at least, um, that I'm not willing for council to say well, those are the rules. That's what all we got to play with right now. I'm, I'm always that the <clears throat> that you you are the biggest lobbyist and an advocate for the community, and we need <clears throat> Snye and Saint Regis reg residents to be able to cross that. Uh, similarly to the way the Cornwall uh, people from Goanoga can cross it, though that's my issue. Nyamo Vincent, before I go to Chief Vanessa, I just wanted to provide a quick comment in regards to, and I think Chief Vanessa, will, she could probably assist in my what I'm about to say is, you mentioned the domestic lane that was established as a test pilot, and that test pilot has been extended, but in regards to that domestic lane, it 
to my understanding, it's actually different from the previous stated P4 lane. And I think I'm going to let Chief Vanessa pick it up from here to kind of provide some additional clarity on that part. Uh, and again, we can bounce back and forth to help you um, help further um, provide information to you on that. Chief Vanessa. Thank you, Chief Edward. Um, Vincent, just to provide you with, um, you wanted the CBSA and MCA, ex the pilot lane um, survey results. Those are located on the alquazasa.ca webpage. There is an eight page document with all of the results as well as all of the comments that were collected during that time. Um, so that is all available on the alquazasa.ca webpage. I have it up now, but it is too lengthy a document to go through. The domestic lane differs from the P4 lane. The P4 lane was when we were the CBSA was located on Cornwall Island and it had a different purpose at that point because we were able to turn right or left and not enter into Cornwall. So once they moved over to Cornwall, it's a totally different uh, situation. Having worked at the CBSA location on Cornwall Island um, for a number of years, um, it was a different situation than having them move to Cornwall. Uh, maybe if you wanted to review the, the pilot lane um, survey results, if you have any further questions or would like to have another discussion on that, um, I'm certainly willing to do that with you. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, want you I want you guys to start working on broadening whatever the domestic, whatever the government of Canada right now uh, calls it, domestic lane, I, I would like it to be, I would like our council to work with the Canadian government to be able to include people coming from St. Regis and Snai too. That's what I want. I can take a look at the results of that survey now that I, I know that, and I appreciate you letting me know that, Vanessa, um, but that's what I want council to work on. Uh, you know, these political things that uh, that are, like you said, Edward, the 20 percent, that's hard stuff, you know, that takes that 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 looks into, you know, our right to cross cross into into a territory that we used to cross into all the time. Yeah, actually, Vincent, um, in regards to the nation building, that is actually another subject matter that we are addressing at that federal level in regards to um, the, um, I guess it's the jurisdictional complications that we have to live with, especially within the Chisnaitna and Ganadago and just daily commuting. Yep. So yeah, so that actually is on our negotiating table. And uh, again, it's far from being done because that those are the tough issues we are pushing and we are lobbying hard for, and Canada drags its feet on those. But we, yeah. as long as I, I can assure you, as long as I myself am sitting at that table, there is no compromise that's going to say, "Well, we'll give you this," and it, this is as good as it gets. I don't. I'm not. I'm not being. Um, I'm not buying into that. Put it that way. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm glad you say that because when. Uh, Dave White had said some of the things that he was saying, and you brought up the fact that you are now working on the harder, harder pieces to um, get Canada to to uh, to to react more positively to. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm rewording your words, um, <laughs> and. and uh, can you can you name a few of the issues besides the CBSA and our and our right and abilities to cross there? Can you name a few other of these hard issues that you are that you're holding out for or working on? Uh, Vincent, I think um, again, I don't want to mistakenly say something that would fall in lines with. Uh, some of the information that has not been, you know, official yet. So if you, if you don't mind, I would like to um, bring that back to our table. And as I had mentioned to Dave earlier, I would look at um, 
the nation building to do an updated presentation so that along with their technical team, we can provide a more proper presentation on those issues at hand and why they are so challenging in getting Canada to respond to. Is that okay? That sounds like a good idea for everybody. Okay, Nyamo Vincent, I really appreciate the, the questions you're addressing and the, you know, and further details of it all. So I like putting okay, that- Nyamo. Okay, Nyamo Vincent. Uh, Chief April, did you wanna to respond to Vincent's uh, statements before I move on to the next community member? Yes, she had the public transportation survey. All I can think of was the kind of smart cities challenge that had happened back in 2017 or 18. It was a type of fund that um, we were applying for through Infrastructure Canada. And it had to, we had to <clears throat> rally all around the community in regards to, uh, it wasn't just transportation, but greenhouses um a health a health app and um it was for a bid for either five or ten million dollar on uh, target and it would would have been a big project and i think it included fiber to the home and um, those types of um infrastructures and um i'm trying to get i was trying to get into my uh mohawk government drive to look that up but it won't allow me so that's what i'm thinking she's talking about Okay, you know, April, um, as, but as I had stated earlier, I'll put down as, as an action item that if we can't kind of look at all of the past surveys that were done and then just get a current status of them. And as Chief Vanessa stated earlier, some of the surveys are actually on our site. So I think uh, further exploration of uh, aquasasta.ca, you may, you may find some of the information in there, but um, we're, we'll still do a follow-up on that. So <clears throat> moving on, we're gonna to go to uh, Connie Hall. She had her hand up, Connie. Hi. Um, when we were, there was talk about the um, community watch type um, programming and um, community um, policing. Um, my biggest fear is that our force is too small that there we don't have enough people. Um, so again, it, um, my daughter and my niece had an experience where someone was trying to get in their house two o'clock in the morning. You know, they're two young, young women alone. Um, didn't, they didn't, it didn't wake them, but the neighbors woke seeing what was going on and the neighbors actually called the police. You know, so like um, things like that really do have to be encouraged. And with the amount, I mean, our other neighbor, the house in the back burnt down. You know, that could have taken out six houses. Um, there, every, every winter abandoned houses become a problem. And, um, but one of my points I wanna make is, is it possible for community members to get like a, um, you know, the um, lights and the cameras for our homes? You know, is there any way we could get like a better rate through a company to have these systems? Because now in this day and age, it all goes back to, catch, you don't catch them, but you can catch them on the video. And I know there's several, um, like some you can buy from the stores, but maybe we need the um, better ones. And maybe that can be a project for our um, volunteers or your um, community um, workers to help. You know, because again, I'm I'm real grateful for my neighbor who happened to be having a, maybe a cigarette in the morning, but without that, who knows what could have happened? You know, they left, they wrecked the fence because we have a fence in between the two yards because people kept going through. They don't really respect people's property. So again, but this was a case of them trying to get in the house. And another one happened just this morning in the territory. So don't have to say names or anything, but you know, th these things are happening a lot more often. So again, uh, I'm really would like to see the um, community policing beefed up 
and possibly give the help the homeowners find some resources that they can afford to protect their homes and their families. Before they get more serious um, answers for these questions, you know, some people already own guns, but we don't need everyone owning a gun. There has to be something. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Connie, in listening to you in regards to the situation at hand, as well as the um, um, inquiry and in, in as far as alarm systems and cameras and lights, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, um, two portfolios, perhaps DIHE, which is the Department of Infrastructure, Housing and Environment, on looking at the street lights in Ganadago. I think that would be an, a, a general step for the whole village of Ganadago to see what all the current status is of the street lighting, because I know with a lot more lighting in the area, less deter it kind of promotes uh, less deterrence. And then secondly, as far as public safety, um, you know, with the federal budget that just came out, I think we'll have to look in there and see if there is any funding that could uh, kind of be utilized in as far as providing those types of uh, um, items that community members could have access to. And, and you're right. We've done it. I've seen it done in the past with smoke alarms, with fire extinguishers. I've seen it done in the past in regards to the uh, um, appliances that had gone through from different funding. So I think this is something that uh, our portfolios can look at and see about where we could allocate that. Because uh, as I stated earlier uh, regarding the budget day that just taken place, I think now's the time for us to start identifying that and seeing where we can look at and tapping into those things. So I hope that kind of uh, addresses some of your uh, questions and uh, situation at hand. Yeah, when well, I think it'll probably be coming up in the next couple months. Yeah, but, yeah, but I do also look at it as, as far as that community watch, I think it's been a pretty hot topic this evening coming from various community members. So I think this is something that uh, public safety will have a conversation with EPS in regards to, you know, providing portfolio with their next steps, meaning EPS and what the implementation is gonna look like. And so we can actually look at seeing this through. Okay. <clears throat> so on that note, uh, I think that would be it for our questions. And so I'm just gonna go back. So I have a CBSA portfolio in regards to that agreement. Uh, have the accountability question in regards with council on the November 15th question. Um, I've got, uh, <clears throat> will it be addressing the fiber to the home and getting more flyers out to the district of uh, just Schneidner and perhaps all three districts just to kind of keep everyone on the same, uh, at the same level on that. Um, there's an upcoming fiber to the home Zoom for just Schneidner, um, the community policing, Council to get more clarity, more clarity from council on their perspective. Um, <clears throat> we've got the roads. So I put on as an action item for the next general meeting. We'll have to see about DIHE doing a presentation as for the roads budget, including all the additional detail for the district of SNI and see where that's at. And in the meantime, as I stated, we could look at the uh, provincial and federal budgets to see where there's some uh, dollars attached where they can start looking at lobbying strategies for the new year. Uh, <clears throat> we've got the cost of the retreat. We've got the FAL strat plan, which we provide uh, some update on regards to that, as well as the finance committee. Uh, council members, conflict of interest forms, we had updated on that, and we'll see to getting those forms uh, filled out and completed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, public safety portfolio, the EPS new police station, uh, as well as the conceptual design and a community consultation on that. We've got the um, nation building, 
self-government agreement. Uh, we're going to look at talking to nation building, see if they can't also prepare a presentation for the next general meeting. Uh, the community watch as well. We've got the surveys. We're going to look at doing a compilation. And those that are not on the website, we'll see a look at getting those posted and uh, possibly a presentation on it. We'll see what uh, how that goes. And as well, again, just the reiteration of the community watch program and uh, community policing in the, all three districts, not just Ganondigo. And then again, we're going to look at seeing about the funding, if there's any funding available that we could do some purchasing for the community members in regards to lighting and uh, possibly alarm systems. But again, it's an inquiry we have to look into, and then we'll get back to you on that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> declaring that business from the floor done, we're going to move into our resolution. So this resolution is to accept and approve the attached general meeting minutes dated Doha, October 28th, 2021. Can I have a mover? Moved by Vanessa, second by Julie. Discussion? Anyone want to call questions? Question? Question's been called. All in favor? All against? It's carried. Okay, uh, our next general meeting date has not been set yet, but it will be in January 2022. And we'll keep the community posted once council sets that meeting date. So on that note, I would like to, on behalf of council, Mohawk Council, I'd like to uh, wish everyone a happy holidays and stay safe out there during these uh, challenging times with COVID. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Edward, do you need a motion to adjourn, oh, please? Can I get a motion to adjourn? Uh, Chief Duane and Chief Julie. Yo. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, everybody. Oh, no.